Well, let's get a wider view now. I'm joined from Washington, D.C. by former U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan, Iraq and the U.N., Zalmay Khalilzad. Uh, good to have you with us. So uh, let's talk about foreign policy. What is the U.S. going to be hoping for from Imran Khan and a new Pakistani government on uh, the policy towards Afghanistan? Can Khan offer anything that his predecessors couldn't? Well, uh, with regard to foreign policy, especially on Afghanistan, it is likely that the control of that policy uh, will remain in the hands of the military and the security establishment. Efforts in the past by civilian governments, uh, such as the Nawaz Sharif government, to exercise control or even significant influence over that policy have not worked. We'll see whether uh, Mr. Imran Khan, which uh, uh, if the preliminary results are correct, if he forms the next Pakistani government and can stabilize the situation, whether he can do better or would pursue a different policy than the military establishment with regard to Afghanistan. The U.S. demand has been clear for some time. Uh, recently, the pressure has increased on Pakistan with regards to ending the sanctuaries for the extremists uh, who are fighting the Afghan government and the coalition in, uh, in Afghanistan. Yeah, do you see um, any contradiction in Imran Khan's speech, which he gave earlier, saying he wants peace in Afghanistan because that will benefit Pakistan, but at the same time he wants open borders with Afghanistan? Well, I, a lot of uh, uh, Pakistani civilians, including the previous government, and even when the generals speak, they say that they want peace in Afghanistan and, and peace is in, in Pakistan's interest there. And, and, and uh, of course, that makes sense. Uh, I would agree with that, that peace in Afghanistan is in Pakistan's interest because that will open uh, corridors of economic relations with Central Asia give the Central Asians the option to export energy products, for example, to Pakistan, which is electricity short, uh, and to India, which is a huge market. But the actual Pakistan policy has been to support the Taliban and other extremist groups fighting in Afghanistan. Will the new government, uh, um, because of the U.S. pressure, uh, um, including offer of assistance, more assistance if Pakistan changes its policy, including with regard to economic development uh, in Pakistan, ch uh, change a calculus and help uh, with peace in Afghanistan, economic cooperation, including uh, the issue that uh, Imran Khan has referred to with regard to the border, can be discussed between Afghanistan and Pakistan. But for that to happen, Pakistan needs a fundamental change in policy uh, not to allow uh, Pakistan to be used as a base of attack uh, against Afghanistan. He's also said he wants to improve relations with India. Of course, this has been something that has eluded um, previous governments, not just in Pakistan, but in India as well. Both uh, have had uh, governments that have said they've wanted to improve relations, but this, is, this has never happened. Do you see perhaps a different approach from Imran Khan? We'll have to see. He did talk today about the, uh, the problem that has been a significant impediment uh, uh, since the very beginning of the creation of Pakistan, the issue of Kashmir. He referred to it. Uh, and Nawaz Sharif wanted to uh, follow a different course uh, with regard to India and perhaps Afghanistan. But uh, that was an issue on which the military disagreed with him. And that was the reason, one of the reasons for the problem between Nawaz Sharif and uh, the military. And uh, I think that's a large part of the problems that Nawaz subsequently have had and now is in jail uh, because of uh, the dispute with the military. Will Imran Khan be different? Uh, in other words, would he be able to pursue a different policy uh, with India and the military would allow him to do that, I, I remain skeptical. I think the military will remain in charge of the security uh, issues, both in Afghanistan and in India, 
and uh, where he can make a difference probably uh, will be on the domestic issues, perhaps on economic issues. He's talked about his primary preoccupation being uh, dealing with corruption, with issues of justice, with issues of opportunities for the poor, uh, with uh, uh, reducing uh, the influence of the uh, big families. Uh, um, uh, those seem to be his primary uh, focus, but I don't think he can succeed entirely on those issues without dealing with the foreign policy issues, and therefore that is the dilemma. Will and he as be far able as that's that? concerned, I mean, those sort of domestic policies would probably go down well with the U.S., who, who, who uh, have cut the amount of aid um, that they give, they give to Pakistan. But this is a, a man who has had quite a bit of anti-American rhetoric, certainly in his campaigning. Are you expecting right. that to be toned down now that uh, he looks like he is going to be in charge? It could be he has an opportunity, in my judgment, uh, uh, for... Uh, uh, some uh, an uh, agreement, if should he be able to convince the military, for uh, an understanding that uh, there will be a change in Pakistan policy to, with regard to Afghanistan and support of extremist groups. And in exchange for that change, uh, where Pakistan's legitimate interests will be respected and returned in Afghanistan, but also U.S., both public and private sector, would get involved, do more, uh, to bring about economic development because that's where the shift in balance is occurring between India and Pakistan, where India is uh, moving forward economically at much faster pace than Pakistan. And uh, Pakistan's isolation uh, and sanctions against it and cut off of assistance to it will not help it on the economic issues. But could uh, Imran Khan uh, be able to do something different. I think the U.S. is interested in uh, a change in policy to more cooperative relations, but it can't do that as long as the Pakistan policy on the support of extremist groups remain. Uh, Zalmay, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, good to speak with you. Zalmay Halil Zad there in Washington, D.C.